Hello and welcome to all the viewers. Today we are going to look at the epidemiology of a very important communicable disease that is measles. Measles uh, which is also known as rubeola is a disease primarily of childhood and it is highly contagious in nature. It is caused by a virus and do remember that it's not only children but young adults who have not been immunized against measles or who have not suffered from the disease in their childhood are likely to be affected by the disease when they are young adults. So what we are going to look in today's session is the epidemiology of measles with reference to its distribution, um, with reference to the epidemiological triad, looking at the incubation period of the disease, important signs and symptoms and finally we will look at prevention of the disease. So let's begin. Who all are affected and what's the distribution of the disease? Measles as I said earlier is a highly contagious disease and it mainly affects children under the age of five years. Uh, since 1980 there is a safe and effective vaccine which is available against measles. Before the advent of the vaccine the deaths which were caused by this disease measles were around 2.6 million per year and mostly it was children under 5 years. So measles was a major contributor to mortality amongst children who were less than 5 years of age. Now since the advent of the vaccine around 78% of the deaths have been averted. In the year 2012 there were approximately 1,22,000 deaths caused by measles worldwide. Now the question is, though there is a safe and effective vaccine available against the disease, why are so many cases and deaths still occurring? Now if you look at the number 1,22,000, yes it seems to be very large, but if you compare it with um, what was there maybe a decade ago, you can see that, that there has been a large decline in the number of cases. The problem with uh, maintaining this protection against measles is that we have to maintain high levels of immunization coverage amongst most of the children in a given community in order to ensure that the number of cases of measles are curtailed. So that's the relevance of understanding the epidemiology of measles. We move on to understand the epidemiological trial. Let's begin with the agent. Measles is caused by a paramyxovirus. And the beauty of this virus is that it has got an affinity to the cells that line a backside of our throat as well as lungs. So what happens is this virus remains in the cells which line our throat, mouth as well as the lungs and the respiratory tract and it can easily spread from one person to other through activities like sneezing, coughing or even talking because it will be present in the droplets which are produced as secretions from our mouth and the respiratory tract and it can be easily transmitted to a person who is susceptible who can then acquire the disease if a person who has the virus in his respiratory tract coughs out or sneezes. So that's the relevance of understanding the agent. This uh, agent is uh, likely to survive in the droplets once they come out from the secretions onto surfaces like maybe a table or maybe a chair or a pen or fingers and uh, the virus can stay alive for around two hours outside the body. But it is Dif I mean it di does differ it may or may not survive but on an average it is two hours so a person who has coughed out uh, secretions which contain the paramyxovirus can come into contact with another person and he or she can suffer from the disease if uh, the person is not protected or in other words if the person is susceptible. Now looking at the host factors as I said earlier children especially under five years of age are most likely to be affected by the disease. However, young adults are also likely to suffer if they are unimmunized or they haven't suffered from the disease when they were children. Most important factor about the host characteristics is the immunity. 
those children who have weakened immune systems either on the basis because of infections or because of malnutrition are likely to suffer from measles more as compared to others who are not uh, this also applies to immune deficiency conditions like uh, hiv or aids or having any immunodeficiency syndromes so immunocompromised states and children who are malnourished are more likely to suffer from the disease vitamin a deficiency has also been um, linked to suffering from measles now we can think of the reason why vitamin a is important to maintain the mucosal integrity and also to ensure the immunity of mucosal surfaces to invasion by bacteria or viruses now in children who are having poor immune systems and uh, deficiency of vitamin a the mucosal systems are relatively weaker so the barrier which they form against bacteria or viruses is challenged and a virus or a bacterium can easily invade the mucosal surface and can cause infections so when we talk about weakened immune system we can talk about secretory iga so weakened immune system means lesser amount of secretory iga which is required to maintain the mucosal barrier against the bacteria or viruses so if secretory iga is low it can then allow a virus or a bacterium to easily invade the cell and cause infection consequently so that's about the host factors now lastly we move on to environment as i said earlier the mode of transmission or the route of transmission of measles is via the respiratory route through droplet spread so the droplets which are coughed or sneezed out are the ones which are going to transmit the infectious agent to people who are susceptible now environments which favor the droplet spread are ones where there is overcrowding and if we look at the agent factors as we said earlier it can spread very easily via the respiratory route and the host factors are mostly children under 5 years of age so the premise where lot of children are put together example being daycare centers or uh, what we call as play group or nurseries these are the places where there is a likelihood of spread of infection easier as compared to others ill ventilated houses overcrowded places uh, are the ones which are favorable environments for spread of infection from one person to other so what we have looked at till now is the distribution of the disease and the epidemiological trial now next we move on to the signs and symptoms and the incubation period of measles now measles is a disease which starts with what we call as a prodrome so from the time of entry of the virus into the respiratory tract the first symptom which occurs is high grade fever and it takes around 10 to 14 days so the incubation period of measles is around 10 to 14 days from the entry of the organism into the respiratory tract to appearance of the first symptom and the first symptom is generally high grade fever high grade fever is generally accompanied by symptoms like runny nose and cough which is termed as coryza in addition one of the pathognomonic signs of measles which is found on examination is appearance of white spots on the buccal mucosa of the affected child generally opposite the first or second molar as you can see in the photograph shown here and these are white spots which are called as um, white grains of salt against a wet background so they look something like that and they look shiny or pearly and they appear few days before appearance of a rash so generally measles is known by rash and people have a misconception that the spread of the disease generally occurs if you touch or you come in close contact with a person who suffers from rash of measles but actually it's the droplets which are the ones which help in spread of the infectious agent from one person to other now after this prodrome is over few days uh, later there is appearance of a reddish macular to maculopapular rash as you can see in the photograph here 
and this rash generally starts on the face and the neck and later it spreads to the whole body what happens is it is said that the rash takes 4 days to develop it stays for another 4 to 5 days and then it disappears in the next 4 to 5 days so that's generally the appearance and the disappearance of the rash since measles is a viral disease the symptoms are mainly self limiting and there is no treatment which is necessary for the rash the incubation period if you consider from the point of view of rash it is considered to be around 7 to 18 days so from the time of entry of the organism into the body it will take around 7 to 18 days for appearance of the rash whereas it takes 10 to 14 days for appearance of high grade fever and runny nose now what's important about measles to understand is these are the most common signs and symptoms of measles however in a child who has got um, a system uh, the immune system which is compromised it can result in certain complications and these complications are quite dreadful so what are the common complications which occur with measles mainly it is encephalitis swelling of the brain um, it can cause diarrhea and if the diarrhea is not well controlled it can result in dehydration which if not taken care of can result in death so measles in immunocompromised individuals can result in diarrhea dehydration death it can also cause severe respiratory tract infections especially infections of the middle ear and lower respiratory tract infections like pneumonia so that's the seriousness of the disease and we can imagine that in a child who is malnourished who is not eating enough whose immune system is actually very weak this virus can cause very severe complications so that is why when we looked at the spread of the disease or the distribution of the disease we talked about so many deaths occurring and as i said earlier these deaths are accounted for by the lower weakened immune systems of children who die from the disease so that's the seriousness of understanding how the disease is caused um, since we have talked about the incubation period let's look at the period of communicability of this disease so period of communicability means the time during which the disease is going to be highly communicable or the virus can spread very easily from the infected person to a susceptible host so this period of communicability is generally four days before appearance of the rash so before the rash appears the highest period of communicability is four days before the same so that's important to understand especially from the prevention point of view which we are going to speak about uh, in a few minutes um, before that we are also going to look at another concept in epidemiology which is known as secondary attack rate secondary attack rate is calculated by considering number of people who are affected or who are infected from a person within the range of incubation period so for example if there is a there is one case of measles uh, in a particular family that case becomes the index case and the cases which follow after appearance of this case these are the secondary cases because these cases have occurred due to spread of the infectious agent to those susceptible hosts so the secondary attack rate of measles is considered to be more than 90 percent so higher the secondary attack rate higher is the communicability or the contagiousness of the disease so that is the importance of this highly contagious disease it can very easily spread and it can cause a lot of cases in a very short while so let's move on to how to prevent or how to protect ourselves against measles as i said earlier there is a safe and effective live attenuated vaccine available against measles which can be either given as um, single um, vaccine or can be combined with mumps and rubella to make it as mmr vaccine this vaccine is very safe and can protect children against this deadly disease measles but the problem with the vaccine is in order to ensure that many children in a given community are protected against measles the immunization coverage which means that 
the number of children who are eligible to be immunized against measles has to be kept very high it has to be over 90% to achieve control of measles so in areas where there is weakened healthcare systems or there are disasters or conflicts there is a high likelihood that the disease measles will gain epidemic proportions because lesser number of children who are susceptible are actually immunized against the disease so we need to take into consideration the level of immunization coverage when we uh, consider prevention of measles so always countries uh, where in we talk about high prevalence of childhood diseases they have to take care that the immunization coverage of the vaccines has to be kept relatively high in areas where there have been you know a spra we spurts of cases like there are uh, endemic zones in whom the number of cases can suddenly increase there there there, there is a need to conduct what we call as mop up activities so all the eligible children have to be given another extra dose of the vaccine during a given period of time in order to ensure that no child is left unimmunized and so the virus can be easily taken care of the concept of herd immunity does apply to measles vaccine so if maximum number of children in the locality are immunized against measles herd immunity can be ensured by which measles disease can be prevented from occurring in children who have not been immunized so that's about prevention by immunization so if we look at uh, when we talk about activities so this is uh, a part of health promotion and specific protection under the primary level of prevention whereby we are trying to uh, give a vaccine whereby the infectious agent can be taken care of antibodies which will be formed will be protective against the antigenic components of the virus so that's about prevention by vaccine how about prevention through other activities so if there is a child in a house who has suffered from measles the best practice would be to isolate this child what do i mean by isolation this child has to be separated from his other siblings or neighbors or other children who are there in the locality and also those young adults who can be considered as susceptible to measles so that this child this child secretions are not going to be coming in contact with the susceptibles thereby preventing the spread of measles and for understanding for how long we need to isolate a child we need to understand the period of communicability otherwise we will be isolating the child for days together and that is going to be disastrous from the point of view of the family's um, dynamics so it is quite important to understand the period of communicability and explain it well to family members in order to ensure correct isolation practices in addition all uh, the uh, utensils or those items which are used by the infected child have to be disinfected appropriately in order to ensure that the virus doesn't get transmitted from uh, the infected person to any other susceptible host um we need to understand that measles once a child gets uh, the disease measles it provides what we call as lifelong immunity so the vaccine when given ideally also provides lifelong immunity if you don't suffer from measles any time and measles uh, there is no subclinical infection and there are no animal reservoirs so what we are thinking now of is through maintenance of high immunization coverage we can eliminate the disease measles we can take it down to such levels that it is not going to be a public health problem anymore so that's uh, in a nutshell about the disease measles so thank you very much for watching do subscribe keep watching see you later bye